we go. All right, welcome everyone to the Fung Fellowship Info Session. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you all and introduce some of our team members as well as um, some current fellows to really share with you more all about the fellowship program. Um, we do have a few slides prepared today to share with you all um, to give you more of a rundown of what the program includes a little bit inside the classroom. Um, but this is really a time for you all to ask questions. Um, so please feel free to put those in the chat. Um, there will be time at the end for an open Q&A uh, to really ask our panel of students and staff um, more insight or questions that you might have or ways to find more information that will be coming shortly. So with that, I will kick us off and share with you a bit, again, a high overview of our agenda today. We'll do a few introductions, um, but then really dive into some of the program information, some of the pieces that will really consist and at the heart of the fellowship, um, explain and give some examples of past projects and current projects that fellows are working on and the partners they're working with in those spaces. Um, a bit about the application, how to apply, um, what are some of the expectations there, and then really getting to open it up to, um, to the students as well as staff of any questions that you might have. So I'll kick off by first introducing myself and then I'll pass it on. Um, but as I mentioned before, my name is Adrienne Greer. I'm the Assistant Director of the Fellowship Program. I came into the fellowship about five and a half years ago now when the program was just a pilot. Um, I My personal background is in public health. I got my master's in uh, public health and program evaluation and planning from UCLA um, and really started working in healthcare innovation space. Um, before coming to Berkeley, I primarily worked within the VA healthcare system, working on how to bring integrative health uh, modalities such as chiropractic, acupuncture, Tai Chi into the healthcare space and how to really disseminate different innovations across, um, ac across different facilities um, around the nation. Um, so within my role here, I really help drive the student experience, work closely with the teaching team of what's happening in the classroom, as well as how it complements the program side, which is some career development, community building, and really um, integrating in that co-design. How can we really bring fellows to the table at multiple different spots within the program to really drive, drive the fellowship? So great to be here with you all. So with that, I will pass it on to Dan to introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Dan Zevin, and I have been at UC Berkeley exactly 13 years now. Um, I do have a background in conservation. I worked uh, straight out of college. I got a job with the California Condor Recovery Program on that uh, quite well-known uh, endangered species. Uh, and the captive breeding program involved with bringing that species uh, back to uh, more uh, safe, to safer numbers. Uh, and then I went on to work for the Nature Conservancy in Hawaii for five years. Uh, got a little bit of what they call island fever. You can, I'm from Los Angeles originally, and you can only go around those islands so many times. So I, I came to San Francisco on a whim. I've uh, been here ever since. I uh, did some uh, environmental consulting, and then I worked for a group that did environmental education. Uh, spent some time at the Exploratorium uh, and eventually ended up uh, here at Berkeley and I wanted to get back to my conservation roots. Um, so I was shopping around some ideas for uh, an undergraduate program and someone said, that sounds like the Fung Fellowship. Great, I went to go talk to Adrian uh, and Jennifer Mangold, our director. Uh, that was in 2019 and very soon after that, we launched the conservation track, which uh, if you Think about it, uh, you know, the original track of the Fung Fellowship, which you're about to learn about, is, is very much focused on public health. The conservation track is really just looking at environmental health, functioning ecosystems, biodiversity. Um, so there, there actually is a lot of overlap, and you'll learn more about that soon. And I will now popcorn it over to Kaylee. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kaylee. I am a current third year at Berkeley. I am studying molecular and cell biology, and I'm in the health and tech track. Um, some of the interests of mine are like 
mixing public, public health and medicine. So I'm an aspiring medical student. Um, other than that, I am a math tutor at the SLC during the summers, and I love sports such as running and swimming. So nice to meet you all. Hi, Great. everyone. <laughs> Hi, you my go ahead, Tyler. Is Thanks. Tyler. I'm going to jump in here. Uh, my name is Tyler. I'm a second semester senior and an honors fellow. I've been really lucky, I think, to be uh, part of this fellowship and be involved with these awesome people since like 2019. So for a while now. And um, yeah, I'm just I love this program and I'm uh, excited to talk to you all uh, later in more depth about like some of the work I've done. And now to Sienna. Hi everyone, um, I'm Sienna. I am part of the Honors Fellow Conservation Track. I study public health and I minored in forestry. Um, I'm also involved with the Tang Center at Berkeley and love to backpack and hike. So very much um, outdoorsy related and uh, focused on environmental hazards and how they are changing in our changing climate. Popcorn Hi see. everyone. Yeah, I'm Sierra. Um, I'm a senior also. I'm a conservation and resource studies major and my area of interest is systems thinking. So I'm really interested in lots of different types of systems. I've looked at urban systems and my doing a city and regional planning minor, um, looked at uh, obviously ecosystems and everything with uh, GIST minors, so that's mapping, geospatial information, science and technology. Um, and I, my one of my big passions is sustainable fashion actually. So now looking kind of more at industrial systems. Um, and I'm currently working at Ginkgo Bioworks as a sourcing associate uh, part-time as, as well as being a student and doing the fellowship, obviously. Um, and what I'm doing there is kind of figuring out how to um, how Ginkgo, which is a biotech company, not a, an apparel company, but um, they have like internal apparel and everything. So figuring out how to make sure that aligns their values and is sustainable and ethically produced. Yeah, and hi everyone, I'm Allegra. I'm also an honors fellow on the conservation track and I'm studying molecular environmental biology with a minor in global poverty and practice. And I think the main area of interest that I pursue in like my extracurriculars is kind of this intersection between environmental health and human health. So I've participated in clubs and also worked with outside organizations in within that intersection. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, we really appreciate it. And of course, we'll get more time with you as we talk about projects and the Q&A panel at the end. So moving along into the program, the nuts and bolts of what the fellowship is, um, I'll go through um, starting off with our story. So before I dive into what the fellowship is now, I always like to start and share about where we came from. I think it really informs how we've gotten to the iteration of the fellowship we are at today. Um, our story really began in 2016 as the brainchild of Coleman Fung, pictured here, um, a Cal alum, an army veteran, entrepreneur, and much, much more. Um, he really had a vision of creating an undergraduate opportunity at Cal to really foster design thinkers to solve real world problems that would incorporate both technology and interdisciplinary studies. And he wanted to give that opportunity to undergrads now. So in 2016, in partnership with the College of Engineering and School of Public Health, we really began as a pilot program, um, really designed for agility and poised for reiteration. Um, so that first cohort was a two-year program model. And really based on that first experience, we really learned um, that it was time to evolve and really mold into the program and the evolution that we have today. So I will share much more about the one plus one model now where we're at, um, including the honors program and really aim to better to support the student experience. 
Um, then our notable change in 2020, we were very excited to partner with the College of Natural Resources, Rosser College, um, to launch our the newest track, Conservation and Technology. So um, really based on student interests and where students were really saying every application um, um, prior to this one, we've asked, what area are you interested in? Where do you want to, what problem spaces are you passionate? And again and again, we saw um, at this intersection of conservation and tech, hence the, our newest track. So within that evolution, our newest program model, our current program model, um, in which all fellows who are admitted into the program um, really commit to one year, so fall and spring semester, um, with an opportunity to apply into a second year, the honors program. Um, so during that first year, which I'll detail much more in a moment, fellows participate in fall and spring semester courses, each for three units that have a lecture and lab component, and participate in design challenges with our community and industry partners. Um, we like to say our plus is that we support internships, or probably more accurately, we support professional development experience in the summer. For some folks, that looks like um, research. For others, it looks like a course along with a project. For some, it looks like a more formal internship. Um, and really looking at what is the right thing within our fellows' career journeys. Um, you know, we do not guarantee internships as a part of this experience, um, but we really are here as a resource to really support each fellow as they go through their academic and professional journey and finding that fit within, within the summer and work closely within our own networks to, to, to apply that support and, and supply the resources. Um, the last part of the one is the honors program where all fellows who complete the first year are eligible to apply to that second year experience. And it really builds on the skills and the foundation of the first year and dive even deeper into year long uh, partner projects or fellow led projects, which you'll hear more about as well. So I think there are a lot of kind of buzzwords within this space of tech, of innovation, of entrepreneurship. Um, so we like to share what are our key pillars within the fellowship, um, in addition to those subject area specific um, topics in the conservation space, in the public health space, um, and our three pillars that really um, fellows are all poised to really learn and deepen in are leadership, technology, and design. Um, I will say that what exactly is in each of these pillars does evolve each year based on fellows' interests and based on um, where the opportunities for impact are, in particular within the technology space. What is emerging tech today may not be emerging tech tomorrow. What is the right tech for the technology that you're working with? Um, we really wanna create intentional technology and innovation. Um, and so really being mindful of what that is within, within different spaces. So as I mentioned, we have two tracks um, currently for the fellowship, both that really apply human-centered design thinking um, to real-world challenges in each of those spaces. So within the health track, it is health different than maybe traditional biotech, but more looking at well-being in public health. So topics that are included within this space might be social isolation, nutrition, housing, built environment, um, and really looking at what are those layers that intersect um, with these important and crucial challenges. And that's looking at policy, looking at social, economic, environmental factors. Um, so some of the um, explore areas may be within population health, looking at health equity, social determinants, social determinants of health, et cetera. Within our conservation and tech track, we are really looking at more biodiversity in conservation and environmental health. So topics could include land use, um, alternative livelihoods, public education, more. We're also looking at those similar layers um, in terms of looking at policy, social, economic, and environmental factors and how they influence these spaces. I think, as you can see, both of these tracks are very interdisciplinary and require a lot of different minds and learning about different fields in order to successfully really address these challenges. 
Um, so some of the primary threats are land and sea use, um, exploitation of species, climate change, pollution, and invasive um, non-native species. So more about the first year. Um, so here's more of a breakdown of the first year experience. Um, so the foundational, what we call our, the inside the classroom type experience, and also, um, you know, within the community building, there is the course, which has a two hour lecture and a one hour lab, um, a boot camp experience that really kicks off um, the experience as a fellow and um, set some of those, those skills to get you ready for, um, for the fellowship experience. Um, retreat um, to really build on build on those skills, but more so around community building, professional development, and those projects, which we'll talk about more um, shortly. Um, the other pieces, more of the opt-in pieces. So these are these are opportunities that we provide throughout the year, and really it's up to each fellow to decide what fits in within their own schedule and career journey in order to really pursue. So things such as conference and company site visits, networking events, workshops, hackathons, and career services. Um, you know, these things have been impacted obviously by COVID in different ways of how we can do things both virtually and in person. And um, we're really here for how do we adapt to really um, deliver what is meeting the need of fellows today and within um, today's market, as well as um, meeting, meeting your interests. Can everyone see my slides okay too? Give me a heads up. Okay, cool. So within the fellowship, um, we have five kind of guiding posts of learning objectives that no matter what, what your background is, whether you come from a very technical background, you come from a deep writing background, you come from a design background, um, sciences, um, or which track you end up participating in, all fellows upon completion of the fellowship will be able to do the following. So I'll just read this through um, quickly. So one is you'll be able to engage in customer research that is empathetic and authentic, implementing diverse and robust sampling and allowing for feedback to influence project decision-making. You'll be able to demonstrate a deeper understanding of the potential that technology has to influence disciplines in substantive ways. You'll be able to identify the challenges and opportunities associated with diversity uh, bias and conflict within teams and implement work norms to support innovation within project teams and with project partners. Um, and you'll be able to use storytelling to communicate effectively with diverse audiences and for diverse purposes. Of course, these are five kind of guiding posts um, with many skills and um, content built in between. So here are um, photos of our two um, year one um, cohorts. Our, in the upper left is our conservation folks and um, bottom right are our health fellows. Um, this was taken at the midterm event um, at the end of fall semester. Um, of this group here, um, really representative of 38 unique majors, I think 36 double majors within this group, 31% are transfer students, 41% um, identify as a person of color, and 26% identify as first gen. Um, but I like to say, you know, we're much more than our numbers or our, um, the stories that I've shared here. These um, fellows really come from really diverse life experiences. They bring really unique passions. They come with um, such a wide set of skill sets. And one of the biggest benefits that I keep on hearing from fellows of what they got out of the fellowship was really working with other fellows and learning from other fellows. So I just wanna really highlight just what an incredible and really diverse and um, interesting set of students that come together within this space and really passionate about, about really making, making a difference. So with that, some photos of what happens inside the classroom. Um, here are just some photos of design process, our lab space. We have a classroom on the north side of campus in Shires Hall where we have lab section, a bit on you know, some final events. 
Um, we really do our best to invite guest speakers into the classroom who are applicable to your design challenge, who are able to share their own professional journeys and give you some more insight into, into these fields and into the intersection. Um, that cross learning that I mentioned, and then um, in particular in the second semester of the fellowship, as well as the honors experience, we really push um, prototyping. And what does that look like to not only innovate within the design space, but then also get some feedback from folks um, um, through a fair. Here are some of the things that happen outside of the classroom um, and that we're looking forward to continuing to do as we're able to, um, and really looking at ways to um, support professional development and community building as well as skill building um, within professional networks. So with that, um, I'd love to share a big part of the fellowship are the projects that we get to work on, right? And a lot of the questions I get from prospective students are, who do you all work with and what type of projects are you working on? So um, I wanted to first share the framework for how we look at our projects or how we frame design challenges. Um, so we, every time we work with a partner, it's framed as a design challenge. So within that, it might include, always includes a how might we question, um, which you'll learn more about some examples in a moment. Um, we offer the opportunity for mentors um, with your projects. So that could be campus faculty, it could be a partner, it could be um, another student. We're starting an honor student mentorship very shortly within this cohort or a community partner. Um, you'll work on teams of anywhere from four to eight fellows um, that are interdisciplinary, so across different majors. Um, the solution that is um, that comes from each from each challenge is based on research, ideation, and testing. And the timeline of these projects really ranges. So we want to give folks experience of a quick design challenge as well as one that's a semester long um, in the spring experience. So with that, I will turn it over to Kaylee to, sh to, to share first about her project. Okay, uh, so my project happened last semester. This is the second design challenge. And the how might we question was, how might we make it easy for elderly individuals to access connected, comprehensive medical and social services in their own community? And our partner was the Change Lab at Berkeley School of Public Health. My team personally chose to focus more on family caregivers, so people who have been uh, suddenly put in these situations where they have to take care of a loved one and they're not paid. They're very often not trained how to administer medication or uh, take care of their loved one. So this is a very stressful time and we call their solution kind of the crisis intervention. And we wanted to focus on creating a volunteer program where medical and nursing students can volunteer through a primary provider that the uh, caregiver would access. They would link them so that the nursing or medical student can help the caregiver learn how to administer medication or uh, create balanced meals. Basically, all these basic needs that their loved one now suddenly needs. And our solution was mainly aimed at reducing the stress that the stress of the caregiver that would in turn give better care and like um, a better situation at home for all parties involved. And just a little snippet of what I'm doing this semester because I'm actually really excited about it. This semester I'm gonna be creating prosthetics um, to help in like in the function of a hand. And I don't have many details about it, but just to show like the wide variety of projects that you could be working in. And um, yeah, so that's a little bit about my project. Thanks so much, Keely. And um, Tyler, if you wouldn't mind sharing about your project. Sure, so uh, I'm happy to share about my project and then I'll make the distinction. So I'm an honors fellow. So like Adrian said, as honors fellows, we just work on one project for the entire year. So this is my current honors fellow project um, that I've been working on all of last semester, all of this semester, and you know we'll continue working and might actually end up uh, working on it into the summer. Um, so 
the kind of how might we question that we started with is how might we reduce anxiety, depression, suicide, substance abuse, and school absence amongst teenagers. And we're working with uh, UCSF Innovation Ventures and some really lovely doctors and experts over at UCSF. And the solution that we're at um, right about now is using a, a sleep-based application and intervention for teenagers, adolescents, that can quantifiably improve uh, mental and physical health outcomes as well as academic performance. So I know it's a lot, but basically uh, the intervention is that, you know, sleep makes all of us amazing humans happier and can increase not only like mental health benefits, but also, you know, physical health, less days, um, you're less likely to get sick when you sleep better, large number of things. Um, so kind of on the right, you can see some of the content that we have, which is like uh, some videos and education and um, app based things. So we've done a lot of customer discovery. I've spoken to like 25 high schoolers this last semester or something like that. And then like 20 like doctors and like other experts. So it's a lot of research, um, but it's a really it's a blast. And then I also put in some of my like past little partners and like um, projects I can very briefly touch on. Um, just because I know people love to like hear like, oh, what partners, <laughs> what partners can we work with? So um, you can see some of those in the bottom left. Uh, I know we got to do one that was like in my first year that was uh, preventing like teenage domestic violence. That one was really impactful and cool. And we got to do um, another one all about like social isolation. So it's really been, I think, a, a good health experience to like see so many different aspects of like healthcare and where innovation is needed. So yeah. Thanks so much, Tyler. And Sierra, and we'll see if the video works. <laughs> I'll, I'll um, pass it over to you. Yeah, absolutely. I'll let you know about what would be the right time to show the video. Um, hopefully it works. Uh, but yeah, so this is kind of a little different. This was, I'm also an honors fellow, but this isn't my honors fellow project because I wanted to be able to show you guys something that we had kind of uh, had like a full resolution for and we have a, our prototype, which I'll hopefully get to show you guys if it works. Um, so this was uh, for conservation tech for the second semester. So it was a semester long project. Um, and we are working with a partner uh, that's called Civic Design Studio. And they're basically, um, they use art and they connect the community through art and usually having um, students do like art installations and things like that um, to kind of like um, bring people across cultures and, and connect people like with their communities and their surroundings. So they were really interested in um, looking at some Oakland parks and seeing ways that um, these kind of like underutilized parks with rich di both diversity and biodiversity um, could kind of bring people in and be used more and be used as a resource to for that cultural connectivity. Um, so our how might we question was how might we promote conservation, civic engagement, and celebrate the socio-cultural diversity at Clinton Park? So that's a lot of different moving pieces. Um, so we essentially proposed um, kind of a redesign for the park, not entirety in its entirety, but with a few different features. Um, one of the things is that uh, safety was a concern at the park. Um, and we were, um, again, this park was used by lots of different people so local community members uh, people visiting the shops and restaurants nearby and also uh the a significant portion of an, an unhoused population was al also um uses the resources of the park so um obviously that's a lot of different users with a lot of different demands um and so what we kind of came up with as uh to improve safety and also um, bring in something that ties up it into like the other features that I'll mention soon. Um, the first thing was kind of these sidewalk art and lights that um, we found like a, a type of paint that that kind of like absorbs light throughout the day and then glows at night for a little bit and then fades throughout the night. So it does not disturb the people who live there. Um, and yeah, we wanted to use that to promote safety. And then what we thought the art would be would be like birds and 
that are all passing, um, crossing paths um, to kind of tie into this theme of migration. And like it says, they're crossing paths and cultures. And eventually when you follow those paths, they would lead to um, a birdhouse installation. So um, not actually where birds would live, but actually based off of, um, uh, I wanna phrase it right, but like altars um, where people, uh, there's a lot of a lot of age, large Asian population of different Asian cultures, um, but something that a lot of the, uh, around the area they have these altars set up where people go and like leave things um, for whatever cultures that they're specifically a part of. So we made um, the birdhouses, which uh, maybe we'll try the video now. They have we kind of modeled them after a few different styles of temples um, and with a few different cultures. Uh, that of uh, people that we found through our research are lo uh, located around the area. Um, and then also inside the birdhouses above that, you can see a little sketch of what that was supposed to look like. But um, I don't know if anyone is aware, um, familiar with geocaching, but geocaching is something that you can do. It's an app and um, you kind of, it gives you hints and so they're really different. Some of them are like a huge puzzle. Some of them are easier to find, but it basically, um, you go and like scan things and then out, once you find them, they do various different things. So it's it's a wide uh, range that can be included in a geocache, but we like that idea of getting people out and looking around and really interacting firsthand with their surroundings. Um, so yeah, you can see there we, we hit a log. The idea was to hide a log book into one of these birdhouses where then people can share their own personal migration stories. So kind of tying that back to how uh, the park is actually used as a migration stop for lots of birds. That's why um, all the bird theme. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of one, like we said, uh, helping people celebrate their social cultural diversity and then also the biodiversity of the park. So it was a really big project and it was really interesting and creative. Um, so I really enjoyed it. Awesome, thanks so much for sharing and sharing the prototype as well. Let's go, there we go. And Sienna, if you wouldn't mind sharing a bit about your project. Definitely. Um, so I am going to share a little bit about the Honors Fellow Project. A little bit of context for this project is that it's actually an ongoing project from one of the junior year fellow conservation tracks. So I was able to hop on to this um, project this past semester or this past fall. And essentially, we're working and looking at how the Hoopa Valley tribe, they're experiencing severe and dangerous outbreaks of cyanobacteria blooms within their reservation, specifically on the Trinity River that runs through the heart of the reservation. Um, and the project is essentially focusing on both mitigating the blooms and educating the community, um, with a large partner being um, the tribal EPA in in um, Hoopa. So this past November, uh, we were actually able to go and visit the reservation with support from the Fung Fellowship. Um, and this just made a world of a difference. So that's just another aspect of the fellowship is they'll support, they'll really support um, your project. And for us, it was very, very important to actually go to the land and hear the stories from the people. So that was a really, really big help in the interviewing process. Um, so going back to our how might we question, that was how might we expand on current platforms of communication to learn alongside and inform tribal members about environmental hazards and mitigation strategies. So our solution essentially is now creating a health literacy like education tool where we're creating a podcast, interviewing local members, um, local tribal members, also people who work at the fisheries, people um, giving kind of a theme about um, basically improving environmental hazards and learning about them. A large thing that we learned during our trip up there was that storytelling has been used in this community for thousands of years. And we really wanted to highlight that and continue and not reinvent the wheel. So. Um, all of those things were super, super helpful in creating our project for, um, in creating a product for this upcoming semester. And we will be going up there hopefully on Earth Day and participating in some of their celebrations. So this is a really ongoing 
relationship. And I think that shows just a really strong um, point about the Fung Fellowship is just how, how these relationships can evolve and also grow over time. But yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. Excited to hear about the next, the next trip up there. Um, and last but definitely not least, um, Allegra, if you wouldn't mind sharing about um, one of your past projects. Yeah, so I'm also an honors fellow and I'm currently working on the honors project that Sienna was just talking about. And I've been working on that since my, the first year of the fellowship, but I really wanted to share this project that I did during the fall of the first year of this fellowship, just because it was one of the most enjoyable ones. And I really enjoyed like working on this project. So the how might we question that our my team came up with was how might we co-create sustainable beekeeping practices to decrease poaching in Bowindi National Park and provide an alternate source of income. And we partnered with the Wildlife Conservation Network as well as conservation through public health in Uganda. So the problem that we were presented with was that Uganda relies a lot on ecotourism, but for their sources of income, but with the COVID-19 pandemic that was prohibited. And because of that, a lot of people in Uganda resulted in poaching as a source of income. So through conducting a lot of informational interviews with local experts in Uganda and really like analyzing um, the local economy in Uganda, my team came up with this idea to make beekeeping more profitable because we saw that beekeeping in Buindi was very, um, could be very successful if done right. So what my team decided to do was to create a low cost of bee smoker and typical bee smokers were around $11, but we made our own prototype um, that made the bee smoker um, around like four or $5. And so we realized that these bee smokers would be beneficial because they would allow more bee keepers to harvest honey in a safe and controlled way. And it also allowed more bee, allowed beekeepers to have more productivity and hive integrity. And it also in, influenced the local economy in Uganda as it helped local tinsmiths and carpenters um, increase their income through making these beekeepers. And yeah, this is one of my favorite projects because one of uh, one of the one of my teammates actually made like the beekeeper and it was the first time that we actually prototyped something during the fellowship and that was really amazing and overall I really enjoyed this project. Um, thanks so much um, for sharing. You all made a really great video too, uh, showing how the, the smoker worked, I remember. Um, so with that, again, thank you all for sharing about um, some of the projects you worked on and are currently working on. Um, there was a great question in the chat about are the project um, shared before um, folks apply to the program? Um, we typically source what fellows are interested in um, once they're admitted. So we immediately ask, what do you want to work on? Where are you passionate? So we can really build those partnerships and look for great projects for the upcoming fall. So we don't have them to share with you now. Um, however, we have a lot of strong partnerships. You can tell within where we're at. You can go on our webpage and look at some of our current partners um, to see um, where, where we're currently aligned. So with that, before I turn it over to the panel and give the remaining time to them um, and to you all to ask your questions, I want to just, again, um, share the timeline. Um, so based, again, on student feedback, this is the first time our application is open to rising juniors and rising seniors. Um, so class of 2024 and class of 2023, there's no major requirement. There's no GPA requirement. Um, we're really looking, and there's no tech or design or conservation or health prerequisite. We're really looking for people who are passionate about this space and really coming um, coming to bring 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 what you, bring what you know and with an open mind to learn um, and really um, create an impact in this area. Um, application, the bit.ly link is there. The deadline is Friday, February 18th. And then at the bottom is a bit of our, our timeline. So 
um, right after spring break is when um, all offers will be will be out. Um, so just and we have one more info session coming um, next Wednesday um, that will be a hybrid in person and shared virtually. So with that, um, I will just put this up here for a moment. Our current student panel here to answer um, your questions. Um, I'm also going to um, stop sharing and also, um, there we go. Um, and also um, stop the recording so we can have a more organic